Right. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep my talk uh, fun and short, because I know everyone's dying to go to the pub, you know? And, and uh, so um, and um, it's also one of the beginner series. So to bring more new people in, you know, get excited about Ember. It's like the future. <laughs> OK. So uh, people always ask, why? You know, why Firebase? Why can't we just use, uh, you know, Rackspace? Or, you know, just, you know, good old Apache. And, and then so uh, my, my, my question, you know, I would like to like start the whole thing with a quote because it kind of, it's kind of the essence of my talk, you know, which is, which is basically that um, hardware is becoming, you know, a, a commodity, right? It's like, it's like, uh, you know, you know, I'm most of most of the stuff that you see that's happening, you know, today, is that you're essentially disaggregating stuff from hardware, right? Which is which is uh, which is what's happening like across industries. It's not just like hosting, you know. It's, it's so, you know, you have um, what you have like you know companies like Uber who have, you know, no vehicles, and and like you know you have like uh, Airbnb has no. So basically, it's like the most powerful people in the world, they. They don't own anything, but they control everything, right? And that's kind of, kind of where the whole thing is going. And it's, you know, so, you know, my, my point of that is that uh, the same thing is kind of happening with, uh, you know, developers as well. And so, you know. This is an actual startup. It's called uh, yeah. So my point is that which brings us to the solution of web apps because that is an actual startup and it's like so everything becomes a commodity, including your phone itself. Because um, the way the way they make that technology work is is they shine some lasers down down the arm and when you touch the fingers, they you know you block some lasers. So then you know they kind of know that this is what you're swiping, and so. You know, your phone, your servers, your cars, everything is kind of become commodity, and uh, the innovation kind of begins and starts with software. You know, which kind of brings me to evolution of web apps, and it, it kind of we had data centers, Amazon Server, and Heroku came along, and when I when I show Firebase here, I don't really mean Firebase just by itself. You know, you have to include things like TreeLine, which is essentially, uh, you know, things like AWS Lambda, which essentially allows you to write node functions that connect, you know, your S3 with your EC2 buckets, and so. Uh, we're seeing the trend that's this kind of boss, which is like backend as a service, right? And so, you know, because the, the whole talk is about prototyping. So, uh, and the other side of the story is, you know, actually the, the evolution of the front end, if you will. And, you know, what's funny about this picture is that that's literally my evolution. <laughs> because I've gone through like, you know, pure JavaScript and jQuery, you know, then Angular, and then uh, and eventually got into Ember. And so if you, got, if you combine the two together, uh, what you have is, um, well, <laughs> Ember on fire. And so uh, Firebase, you know, kind of has some limitations, like, like you know, the, the rest of us. And see what I did there. <laughs> and so the maximum number of, like, child nodes you have is about 32. Um, so, you know, you can't, you can't go beyond that. And, you know, you the key that you have can only be up to six, uh, six, eight bytes, which means you can only have a limited number of keys because eventually you, you know, grow out of you know, possibilities. And you know, uh, one child can only be 10 megabytes because they store the whole data as you know, base 64 encoded binary data. And so uh, you know, things like you know, 100 million noise in the operation. But none of that really uh, stops that. And you can, you can have. You can write data from SDK in the 16 megabytes and tops, and or from the rest. You know, it's up to you. But if you don't like any of them, because um, my whole idea of this talk is to provide a different different perspective, right? Because most the, the previous two talks they talk about controllers and they talk about uh, you know all, all of this like kind of a traditional Ember thing. Whereas the way I would tend to build things, I would just build a bunch of components and services and I would just wire them up you know, with, in, with a router. Like I, w I wouldn't use controllers or avoid them altogether, no injectors, you know, and I'm kind of like very Ember 2.0 future looking. And, and so 
and so if you if you would if you have a Firebase object and like in the whole SDK and you don't want to use either of them, what you can do is just monkey patch the Firebase object uh, with 20 lines of code, which essentially converts it into uh, an observable. Uh, and so that's the key here. And so what that allows you to do is, is essentially treat this the whole thing as an observable. And for the purposes of prototyping, uh, it essentially allows you to you know build collaborating drawing apps in like four lines of code. Uh, I wrote this like literally in 40 lines and it's, it's just a bunch of observables and they uh, in going through some pipe, pipe through some filters and eventually just you know, s you know store some data in the Firebase. And you know what you have is, is literally is it, just kind of you can open like as many windows as, as you want but you know the, and it's kind of a so Things like things like open data sets as well, like Firebase, uh, and you know lots of other places, they provide a lot of data that's that's open and it's and it's free in real time. You know anything from you know airport delays to earthquakes, you know cryptocurrencies. It's kind of the the gold mine for prototyping. If you tr if you tr if you're trying to build something, you at some point you're gonna have some you know some data, you know to show off. And so, you know what you could use, you know you end up with uh, uh, projects like like that. Which is essentially uh, all all San Francisco buses in San Francisco that you know in that radio, and, and one of my side projects actually is you know trying to you know port this to London, because uh, it's it's like you know every time I'm waiting for the bus, it's, it seems like uh, it's, it's either late or you know never arrives, and you know create a domain that, you know where the hell is my bus dot com and just put it on every you know bus stop so people can just go and have a look, but. You know, the only way, the only way you know this kind of thing is possible is because you have all the backend handled for you, and you have all the data provided in real time. So all you have to do is just connect, you know, it together with a few lines of code. Um, and so, you know, instead of, and you know, like another point of that, like instead of REST, you could either just write Light Node Workers or just use Zapier, and uh, that's what I've been using so far to prototype a lot of stuff, especially like things like hackathons, and uh, you know. Even if you're at work and you need to come up with some, you know, decision, how you're going to go about this particular problem, the best way to come up with that is to, you know, build a few prototypes and see which one, you know, performs better or whatever fits, you know, your criteria. And so, uh, Zapier, for example, it has I don't know hundreds, if not thousands, of integrations. And so, just just with Firebase alone, you have well, you know, literally in 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 you know, three three four digits. And so what it allows you to do is you can pick any integration you want. And you know, in this particular example, you know, I, just, I just picked uh, email, for example. You want to send an email, and you, wanna, you don't want to build a whole backend for it in your service. So you know, if you just created a record in Ember um, and you know, saved it to the Firebase, that would essentially trigger the Zapier. And the way, the way it would happen is you is essentially Register for an account, it's free, and you know you just put in the Firebase account URL, you know as simple as that, and then register for uh, Mailgun or Mandrill or whatever your service provider says. Just check in your APIs right there, you know, and and then URL, and then set up some 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 kind of events, because those things that I've recorded here, they automatically become accessible in 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 here. So you know, if you're trying to send something like personalized email to someone, um, that's unexpected. <laughs> right. So yeah, you can you can basically select what you want. You know, it's directed from what you recorded. And so what it allows you to do is to you know have whatever service you want running in literally you know in seconds if two minutes. And so, uh, you know, what you end up is, you know, in a record you can pick stuff up. And obviously, you can test this, the whole thing, uh, and they provide a very nice interface for that. And so, but is Firebase good just for prototyping? You know, because that's, that's, that's kind of like, that's how, that's how usually people start. That's kind of how I started. Um, and so, you know, so the, the only question is, because it's only good for prototyping. And then some people say, 
it, it doesn't scale or you know doesn't it doesn't have the features to handle you know all these other things and you know complex problems that they have and so I just like to have a look at it and say that well, especially since the recent developments that are happening uh, and, and Harvey is being bought by Google and they do provide backups to all the people who are um, scared of losing their data if you will or just not having uh, you know like like what if, what if Firebase goes away, you know, on, on all these kind of things? Uh, although not likely. I mean, they do seem to be very active in hardware as well. I have been to the uh, talk of, of Resin, and basically it's, Resin is like Heroku, but for hardware. And so if you combine it with Firebase, you can, you know, you can essentially build, well, an illusion of hardware products. And so, because what 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 Resin does it abstracts away all of the uh, you know from writing code to deploying to all of your devices, and so what you end up is with a system is like with a Tesla, like when Tesla released their cars and they had uh, they had a, they had like a, a flaw, right? What does what does Toyota do? They they just recall the whole fleet and just you know go into uh, massive massive laws in you know, millions. What Tesla did just pushed a firmware update over the wire to all the cars that are unavailable. So like Resin kind of allows you to do that. So, you know, even after you've sold your devices or, you know, that kind of stuff. And the Firebase, uh, and I'm just linking to the blog post here, uh, essentially the, they allows you to sync everything between these devices without you actually managing it, you know, in a way. And so, uh, and because especially since Java's going into the hardware and all this pervasive, uh, things it, it provides nice security features, and so, so essentially, it, you know, it can, it, you could you could say it's like a full stack backend, if if you will, um, and you know, obviously, the probably one of the biggest concerns is is, is mobile, and so, uh, you know, people always, you know, it's it's kind of like a big huge topic right now, and everyone is always con concerned about this, and they're always. Uh, there's like this massive war between you know native and, and JavaScript and the WebKit and you know uh, and this talk I've just been to it's literally with the with the service workers uh, they, they they managed to to bring down uh, the whole the whole thing to like you know nine seconds and you can be you'll be able to interact with content like literally you know after 0.2 seconds because as everything else is being loaded and and so I mean. And all all of the things that Miguel talked about, uh, you know, in a previous in the previous startup, is like, it's like it's like so. It's it's not it's not just, it's not just like on the back end. It's a full stack. It allows you to all, do all of these things, but also if you combine it with all the other technologies that are out there, like service workers and animation API, you can essentially you know build anything at incredible speeds. Uh, which is which is kind of good and bad in a way because that means competition is pretty pretty high because the low barrier is quite entry, and so you know I I figured I'm just gonna give some examples uh, of 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 how of how Firebase tried to try to handle the the you know is it just for prototyping uh, kind of question, and so I have used few in the past but basically they have. Uh, you know, work was they have the graphing libraries, they have uh, integrations with the Elasticsearch, um, and you know, ability to essentially import like ridiculously sized JSON files into the Firebase itself, uh, and, and using it as a storage. And so, what what, what you end up with is an architecture that looks uh, very much like this, where you know you're essentially providing all of your clients like kind of real time thing like it doesn't matter where you go these days everyone expects uh, stuff to, to kind of happen real real time in, in push notifications and if you go to you know companies like Diffshow, they provide web hooks for for push notifications you know to all of the, the clients and you know so especially like like going going forward and like uh, you know British Gas when they talked about it and you know, because you don't have to roll the page every time, you can get to the quote in you know x number of seconds. And I think it's kind of becoming increasingly more of a trend, especially since we're having all this Internet of Things coming along, and you know, 
your toaster is a computer and you know your fridge is a computer <laughs> and all of these things they you know they want to be kind of connected and so you know at some point you end up building uh, applications not not just for well the web really but like for everything and, uh, and there's quite nice projects like NW the JS and you know things like that which essentially allow you to you know use Ember to build desktop apps and so uh, you know things like Silent JS and uh, you know you know Johnny Five and all like they essentially allow you to use JavaScript on everything and you know considering the recent developments it you can actually get to a really really you know perform you know quite nice performance on you know almost matching or better than native and so um, I mean. I'm I'm definitely a big believer in that. Is that is that when you when you have a very 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 high high concurrent applications, which is why you have like channels and Go and you know you know all all these other things. Is like st state state kind of becomes it kind of you know the the thing that British guys talked about uh, fat controllers. You know is 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 is, is exactly that uh, that kind of problem. It's when you have and it's pretty much a kind of a limitation of human brain in a way is that is that you just can't handle this this much of a complexity and different things happen at the same time and so abstracting your your way of thinking and your way of writing code is is kind of important and you know I, I truly believe that using things like like firebase and or bas as in backend as a service uh you know allow, allows you to essentially focus on the value that you're providing, as opposed to you know doing the DevOps stuff, you know, or worrying about you know what 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 configuration I have and you know what 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 kind of you know like load balancing stuff. Like, you know, there's startups that provide load balancing as a service, and so everything bec everything becomes more and more commoditized. And you know, like I said in the beginning, it's becoming disaggregated from the hardware. So hardware just becomes like you know you can just off the shelf. Kind of, kind of the idea, and so probably the best example I've heard is uh, there was a talk, uh, and and the CTO of Netflix was talking, and he was like, uh, you know, saying how you know, they're using SSD now, and you know, and all you know to improve the speed, and so this guy at the end that says he started like a big rant how, you know, how um, how SATA is much better, more stable, more robust, can store more data, and the whole rant was like I don't know, it was like forty minutes. Right, and and the student just you know stands there and he just he just he just listens, 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 and like at the end of this rant, he, he's like, I don't care, I rent them, <laughs> you know, and so, so you know, and, and you can see like you know one of these ninja movies where he just slice you like that, and, and then it takes like two seconds and you just slide off, <laughs> half half like that. So you know, I think it's kind of. It's kind of to summarize the whole talk about about like it, it it's all about you know regardless whether you're prototyping or you're building something in production it's it's usually you know the first to the market wins uh, uh, and it's kind of a, you know get that you know first passion out and you know it, it's 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 kind of a a bit of a prototyping along the way is going to save you a lot more you know to, towards the end of it um, you know in, in terms of like you know what decisions you have made and how how much they affected you you know in the future and so um, yeah <laughs> all right so have questions okay how, how do you how stable do you find the Ember Firebase adapter in terms of recent native Ember functions? Um, there's Ember Fire if you're doing CRUD operations. It's, uh, it's really good. It became, became really good probably like when I started doing Ember, which is like six months ago. Uh, it, it started becoming really good in terms of, you know, when they first started out, Ember Fire had its own syntax, but there is now they just use Ember data syntax. So there's no new syntax to learn, um, and you know it's it's been like ridiculously active in terms of uh, you know development and all those kind of things. Uh, for 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 examples, in the beginning, I you know if you're doing something like a drawing app, 
crud is a bit, is a bit, you know, is a bit of a, you have to kind of wrestle with a bit. So, you know, it's, so I just use pure fire based. It really depends what, what you're doing. Um, you know, if, you, if, you're, if, you're, if you're using Ember Data, Ember Fire is definitely the way to go. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, I would tend to start an apps with with Firebase, uh, not to use like you know, uh, Pretender or Ember Slime because because Firebase copies the data from your front end, uh, so you don't have to implement the whole thing twice. So as you essentially have like a like, a, uh, you know, it's kind of I think what the future should be is like why would you have to implement every single piece twice? <laughs> You know, <laughs> in the back end, and the same thing in the front end. And Firebase kind of alleviates that because it just allows me to, and it's very easy to, to switch. So like if you build the whole thing and, you know, Firebase just switch the adapter and, you know, now you're Rails using Rails API or, you know, Node API or whatever. It's like the Ember that makes it very nice to be able to switch to different APIs without barely any code change. Um, how would you tend to handle file upload in a prototype with Firebase involved? Say if I wanted to store my files on S3, for example, and then save the URL or something like that in Firebase, how would you, what setup would you go for there? They're coming with a feature that essentially allows you, well, they're, they're, they're building S3 for Firebase uh, <laughs> uh, to, to solve that problem. Uh, but, you know, uh, right now, I would probably just use a string or something like that. You know, it, there's there's quite a lot of integrations uh, where you would just store the URL in Firebase, you know, but the actual actual file, you know, on on, on S3 or you know so, some some other hosting service. They, they are they are building. I don't know. They haven't announced the date yet, but they they're gonna have you know the whole conversion to terminal and, and the whole thing. Yeah, it's like Firebase, but yeah. Facebook bought it yeah. instead so of Google. No, Firebase isn't isn't as full stack. As as uh, well, Paris not as full stack. Like in terms of in terms of latency, push is probably the best. Uh, but they only provide web sockets. Whereas in terms of a number of features, um, Firebase is definitely the best. You know, in terms of like, because that's the whole idea about prototyping and building things as quick as possible. And you know, eventually, you know, you could potentially scale with Firebase or switch to something else. It's just to build as fast as possible, as quickly as possible, and as, as little time as possible. And so, you know, it, it improves your decision making, it improves, uh, you know, you know your, your, your ability to prototype stuff and, you know, build, 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 build from there. It, it's, it's kind of like, you know, you have four frameworks, which one to choose? You just build some application of all of them, and then you pick one, right? Instead of just picking one, you know? It's, you're gonna you're gonna make better more more fun decision. So same thing. Uh, it's very common for me at work to prototype stuff like, uh, you know, to you know to build this stuff. And would you, would you do it that way or that way? You know, and and so you know which one would be faster and which one. So you know, you just build quick prototypes to decide which way you wanna go. But yeah, it's really gone and easy. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you. <laughs> Technically, using backend as a service, even if you're buying stuff on Amazon or Rackspace, because you're you're buying you're buying Isn't some. Isn't that platform as a service? I mean, seriously, because I think additional acronyms are not necessarily useful. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you know, I just, I just don't like. Or it could be SaaS or something else. Like. Yeah, 
it's, it's just, it's just, you see the standard corporate, uh, corporate environment as well. Like people are now are switching to EC2 or whatever. They, they stop having their own server box. It's, oh, it's my server box, you know, like, and they're, they're building less secure systems than what EC2 would provide. Like, it's, it's, yeah. it's, in, I mean, I used to work from, from corporations and it's insane. Like they, they, they think they're more secure, but, but they're not, they just, you know, it's, it's like trying to build your own ember from scratch. Probably gonna, you know, not gonna it depends on the organization. So like yeah. some of the clients I work with, they're gonna own their own tin because they're using the control and there's of certain data where they need to be much more um, aware of what's going on with that data. And then using a service like EC2 or Firebase or whatever, is easy and flexible for them because the risk of data loss or any sort of outcry because of it is very low. Yeah. I mean, I think I've said this before, but I truly believe that everything in the middle will disappear and you have like, uh, you know, indie developers or in agencies and you have like, you know, infrastructure providers like Google, you know, or some clients you work with and, and you know, they provide the backend as a service and they help us provide the innovation part. And everything with Fiend can't compete with either. So they're, they're just, you know, going to die, die out. Because you can't, can't compete with Google, you know, structure and scale and you can't compete with developers and innovation. So, you know, it's like, and so this is kind of like, you know, this is if you're an indie developer in, as, instead of you're building Google. <laughs> can, I, can I get a show of hands who's using a platform as a service like Firebase in an app today? And everyone else, you're, you're building your own backend infrastructure with, with Rails or .NET or something like that. Lots of those is stuck because our data is in a data center yeah. and it's, they're obsessed with security. Mm -hmm. Even trying to get hold of that data, you have to go to three different layers to actually get to it. So the, the ideal would be to use Firebase. I'll be looking at like Firebase to, for real time. And that real time service to a customer is great because that's that's what you want to see. You want to make a change to your go really crazy, you know, easy stuff. You know, like I want to change my tariff straight away. You want to say that, and then it's back on your site. You want to see the prices change. You want to know straight away. You don't want to wait like our back end systems do two days or two weeks or whatever it is it takes over that process. So you'd, you'd want to sort of have something like Firebase, but it's again, we have a limitation which is security. And they're obsessed. They are like literally obsessed with the firewalls. How much of the data is going through the firewalls, and that's what our biggest issue is. Hmm. If you can convince them, okay, well, that's, 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 that's always that option. Is to get they're either going to move, are they? There is a contention around uh, personal information. Yes, right. that's and, it's and DPA, data, data protection. You don't want to be yeah. giving that all that stuff away, and this is where it becomes an issue. So, Amazon, we've been looking at using Amazon as a, again, as a place to get the stuff up quick, get the servers up and running. As soon as you start saying, well, you've actually got to now make sure that the firewalls are all protected, that the log comes out, PCI compliance, you stop, and then it starts loading on the services. You start loading on the extra services. They exist, you can buy the extra service on it, and you start actually costing it up, and it's actually more expensive up to a point. It's up to, when you're, when you're not, I'm not saying startups are worried about DK, but most of them are. And once you start going crossing over into corporate, it's data protection and PCR compliance. And Amazon, they are compliant. We've got compliant systems, but then if you then don't uh, follow the rules, a compliant system can become uncompliant very, very quickly, for example. Mm. Back in a service, brilliant. We were looking at it a while back. And it's, it's just that, that extra level that kills us. Because we want to be fast, we want to be quick, we want to be innovative. And Firebase is great, prototype, and we use Apogee. Apogee was a brilliant thing for building our first APIs as a proxy, very, very quick. It exposed our crappy, uh, our crappy APIs that we built in post and get serverless. Very, very quickly, we can build up an API, we can build calls into it. Apogee, brilliant. You say, oh, I want an enterprise version of that, that's now segregated out, we PCI compliance through it. The cost went from zero, which is what Apogee was, the free version, up to uh, 100,000 pounds a year, just to go from no security, enterprise security. And it's all running on AWS. 
Apogee runs in AWS, but they've got an enterprise version and an enterprise version. 100,000 is zero. <laughs> Brilliant to prototype. Pretty expensive once you actually start to actually look at it as a, as a corporate, unfortunately. Good for prototype. Yeah. We still use it for dev test. Hmm. Alright, uh, any more questions for Vodas? Okay, give me a hand.